do we hear or talk about health? For some of us, it is a regular conversation about how we are feeling or how our bodies are getting along. Someone told me, when you get this age, it's just patch, patch, patch. Okay. For others, when we think about health, it may be a call from a doctor's office or the school nurse that then changes the course of our day. For all of us, we hear repeated messages from commercials or other media to take on a healthy lifestyle. Maybe that is the food we eat, or the exercise that we should be doing, or the ones that are doing it well. Rick and I felt really healthy this week when we were invited over for dinner and we were served a carrot souffle. Doesn't that sound healthy? It was also good. We may also use the word healthy to describe the current season of garden produce or crops. We've got a healthy crop of soybeans this year. Well, today I would like to invite us to think about the word healthy for our spiritual life and our church. A week ago at annual conference, our theme was healthy, inviting, abundant. So I will be sharing some thoughts around each of those themes today and for the next two Sundays. So today let's think healthy. Listen again to a few of the words in today's scripture. These words from Jesus as translated by Stephanie. That was a joke. <laughs> Hear these words. You have already been cleansed. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. What a recipe for good health. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide. Grow in my love. Our conference preacher and teacher was Reverend Jorge Acevedo. He is a United Methodist pastor of a large growing church in Florida. And it is a church that names as its mission to be with those who are in recovery and on the path to renewed health. <coughs> And so he began his words to us using this scripture that we have before us today. And then he said this motto, Faithfulness precedes fruitfulness. Faithfulness comes before fruitfulness. In other words, faithfulness must be central to our lives before we can do anything else. Certainly before we can be fruitful. Another way he said it was, you can't give what you don't have. Wow. And so if we think about the way Jesus said it, he said we are to abide in him. Live in him as he loved us and taught us to live as faithful persons. So what is involved in this life of health? Of abiding in Jesus. What might be required for ordinary faithfulness? As we seek to abide in Jesus, we seek to remain centered and constant in Jesus' love and mission. That sounds really great, but sometimes it's really easier said than done. One way to think about it is to stop trying to follow Jesus 
and to start training to follow Jesus. Hmm. How do we do that? Well, certainly there are lots of ways. Sometimes it's a matter of simply giving ourselves time each day to read the Bible or another kind of book or devotion to focus ourselves just on our spiritual needs and to feed ourselves. Maybe that's through prayer. Maybe it's through what we might call holy conversation with another person. Perhaps it's just taking time to listen to God in some quiet or silence. When we do all of those things, we are also taking the focus off of just our own self. We are creating a space for newness. Perhaps it's like tilling the soil in the garden. It's offering us a fresh and new experience of Jesus in our lives. When we seek to stay connected in a rich, authentic relationship with Jesus, we find that we grow in our spirits. Sometimes it's what we often call a God moment. Do you ever use that term? It's kind of those moments when something happens in your life and you feel it in your spirit and you don't really have a logical explanation or a rational response or it's just got to be a God thing. Well, that happened to me this week. I, I'd like to say it happens to me every day, but if it does, I'm not aware enough to recognize it. But a really special thing happened to me this week that I wanted to tell you about. I was sitting in my office and and actually, I was working on this sermon, and my cell phone rang. That's not unusual. It was a number. I didn't know the number. No name showed up. I answered it, and, and is this Janet Maxwell? Yes. Well, you don't know me. Don't you love that? <laughs> you don't know me, but I used to work for your father. Well, that got my attention. My father died 31 years ago, so I don't often have a lot of people who engage me in a conversation about my dad. And he said, well, I'm going through my stuff. Okay. And I found this photograph of your dad. Really? He's holding a knife about 10 inches long. I said, what? He said, yeah, and there's this great big birthday cake in front of him. Oh. Yeah, he looks really young. Really. Well, this picture was from 1945 when my dad turned 30. Before, of course, his loving children were around, even before he was married. And I had no idea why this man had that picture, but he did. And he said, you know, I've been going through my things and something just said to me that I'm not the one that should have this picture. You should have this picture. Well, not really. I said, so I'm going to get it to you, okay? Great. And then he goes on and on to talk about how he worked with my dad and how great they were and da 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 and I thought, of all things, to call out of the blue and say, here, this belongs to you. And he didn't have to do that. He could have kept it and I would have never known about it. But something inspired him to track me down, pick up the phone, and call. And at that moment, I'm working on how it is to be healthy and keep connected to God and to each other. And there was just something about it that said to me, hmm, this is one of those God moments. Sometimes all we need to do is pay attention and name our experience as the presence of God in our lives and how we respond to that presence. 
Today's scripture also talks to us about pruning. Well, that is too a part of a healthy life. Just as Stephanie shared about roses, you know if you prune them back how much they flourish. Well, as we think about ourselves, we might think about pruning as well. Whether it's pruning off too many pounds or bad habits, or maybe it's cutting away those things that keep us from being faithful. Those things that distract us or compete with us or take over our lives in unhealthy ways. Often to be healthy in every aspect of our life, including our spiritual life, we need to prune away some of the old ways and celebrate new possibilities. As you are gardening and tending your life this summer, you may want to ask yourself, we may want to ask ourselves, what do I need to prune? Healthy faithfulness, you know, happens in community. The word you, Y-O-U, that's in our scripture reading today is both singular and plural. Do you know that one of the number one issues for people today, one of the number one things that people struggle with, is loneliness. Can you imagine? Whether it's too much time on electric commu electronic communication or whether it's the busy lives that keep us from significant face-to-face -face conversations, it is loneliness that pervades in our communities, in our culture, in our world. And I think too much loneliness is not healthy. So as individuals and as our church, we ask ourselves, how are we doing in staying connected in rich, authentic relationships with Christ followers, with those who journey with us in the faith? One of the great joys of annual conference is connecting with people from all kinds of places in all kinds of churches. My heart is always warm to see people that I have known through conference work or through pastoring churches or connecting with churches and pastors, laity and clergy alike. It's those moments, even briefly passing in a hallway, when we take time to connect that we build our community in Christ. It's like when I talk with the pastor in Baxter Springs and ask, how are you doing really with all the disaster recovery? Or when I see a colleague whose spouse is seriously ill and we take that quick moment to pray together. Or when I see and smile all of the youth participating in the life of the conference, and I remember those who nurtured me as a youth to do the same. When we know that all of us as churches and pastors in the conference are connected by our common United Methodist mission to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world, and we begin to see the difference that we really make in people's lives through the giving toward our mission opportunities. There's so much more that we can do when we join together than any of us can do alone. Together we celebrate our faithfulness to seek to be healthy disciples of Jesus Christ. And that's the same for us right here. The same for our church. Our health and renewal comes to us individually and through our community of faith. You know, the foundational scripture for our mission statement that we say every week in worship is today's scripture. I am the vine and you are the branches. Those who abide in, in me and I in them bear much fruit. God is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. Our hope as our community of faith is that we abide in Jesus, 
that we live our faithfulness through the mission we share as our church, our E3 to embrace, engage, and extend is the lens through which we look at all of our ministry and work and life together. It is the guide for our life here and our life as we go from this place to be the church in our neighborhood and in our world. As Jesus said, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love, I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. That's good health. That's our spiritual joy. So today, and as we begin this summer season, and as we go throughout our days and weeks, enjoy that ripe strawberry, or that homegrown tomato. And as we take good care of our physical bodies, so may we also grow the good health of our faithfulness each and every day. Thanks be to God who abides with us always. Amen.